we're going to be covering the carbonyl group, uh, what it is and how it reacts. Uh, and this video is a little bit of background about uh, the different functional groups that contain uh, the carbonyl group and, uh, and how to name a few of those. So the, the carbonyl group, as you'll know from the lectures, is uh, our C double bond O group. Uh, and there are a bunch of really important and basic functional groups that contain this. Um, the, uh, the two that we're going to spend a lot of time on in lectures at the start would be uh, ketones. Um, and that's when the carbonyl group is surrounded by hydrocarbon chains with no other functionality, essentially. Um, if one of the uh, side chains is, a, is an H, then we have an aldehyde. Um, if something on, instead of the, the H, we have a carbonyl group again with a, with a hydrocarbon here, uh, and we have an OH here instead, then this is our carboxylic acid. Um, if the, instead of an OH here, next door to the, the carbonyl, we have a, an O and then an alkyl group of some kind. Um, so instead of an OH, we've got OR, where R is some hydrocarbon group, then uh, that's an ester. Um, these are, the, I guess, the most common that we're going to do. Um, there are uh, a couple of others that we should just uh, mention. Um, in, in Certainly in nature, the one that we, we see a lot is, is where the group that's uh, joined to the carbon of the carbonyl is, a, is, a, is an NH2 or a, a, an amine group, and this becomes an amide. Very different chemistry from amine. This is an amide. Uh, and if we have the NH2 there, we call it a primary amide. If the nitrogen itself has another alkyl group, a hydrocarbon-based group, it's a secondary amide. And if the nitrogen's bond to two other carbon-based chains, it's a tertiary amide. Um, and then the two that we should also cover, which are a little bit less common, are um, where the carbonyl is, uh, is bonded here to another oxygen, which is itself then bonded to another carbonyl group. Um, and we call this a, an anhydride, or an acid anhydride. Um, and the last one that we'll see a lot uh, in terms of its use in synthesizing some of these compounds um, is where the carbonyl uh, carbon is bonded to a, a chlorine, and we call this, uh, often call this an acid chloride. Um, or an acyl chloride. So these are the different functional groups. Ketone with two hydrocarbon chains, aldehyde, where one of those is an H. Carboxylic acid, carbonyl is bonded, carbonyl carbon is bonded directly to an OH. If it's an OR, where R is some hydrocarbon thing, it's an ester. Uh, amide, where the, the, the group bonded is, is nitrogen based. And then the two less common ones that we see in terms of their reactivity, that they're important, but we see like, fewer of them are the acid anhydrides and the acid chlorides. Okay, so those are the different functional groups. We should just uh, talk a little bit about nomenclature, about how we name some of these things. Um, now, in this course, we're only going to ask you about naming four of these, uh, the four most common that I mentioned at the start. So the, the ketones um, are named by using the suffix own. So we have a, uh, on the end of our name, we, we put the word uh, own. So we have the same stem chain. So if the, if the carbon chain is uh, two carbons, we have this ethan beginning. And if it's if it's three, it's propan. If it's four, it's butan. So the, the chains are the same as the ones we've seen for the hydrocarbons and the alcohols and the alkenes and everything. But at the end, we have an own there. So um, as an example uh, for this molecule, this ketone, we have a four carbon chain. Um, and we have our carbonyl group in the, in the two position if we want to keep the numbers small. So um, this molecule would be butan to own to show it's the ketone with the carbonyl in that position. Um, if we have the corresponding aldehyde, so a four carbon chain, uh, and the carbon is, carbonyl is on the end, so now we have an aldehyde, um, then the thing we put on the end, is, the start is the same. Um, but the thing that denotes that it's an aldehyde is that you put an al on the end, so butanal, and then that gives that functional group. Um, just by extension, if we want to do a four-carbon chain that is a 
carboxylic acid, then it's the same idea. Again, we have butan as the starting point, so it's the same kind of stem as the ones we've seen before. Uh, but the thing you put on the end is oic acid. So this is butan oic acid. So the stem is the same in each case, but you just change the ending to denote the different carbonyl-based functional group. Um, the one that's a little bit more difficult is, uh, is the ester. Uh, I'll just run through that quickly. So um, as you'll see a little bit later in the course, um, an ester is, let's put a couple of carbon chains on here, um, the ester is made from two components. We, we actually synthesize it from, usually, we synthesize it from a carboxylic acid um, and an alcohol. We combine these things together under acid catalysis to give us the, the, uh, the ester. So the name reflects this a little bit. What you do here is you, you name this molecule um, starting with the bit that came from the alcohol. Um, so in this case, this, came from, this, is an, an, this is an ethanol component which is made to make this molecule. So we start the name by saying uh, uh So this is coming from, this component's coming from ethanol. So the part of the, the first part of the name is is to use, uh, as with, with methyl groups and ethyl groups and other alkyl groups, we start the name with, with the version of this, of this fragment, which in this case is an ethyl fragment. Um, and then the, uh, the other part of the molecule, which came from the carboxylic acid, in this case is a three carbon chain. Um, so we would use this as propanoic acid. In the ester, of course, it's not an acid, so we add a little thing on the end of the molecule to say it's an ester, so it's ethyl uh, propan. And O8, and that O8 implies that we have um, an ester. So we start with this this fragment, the the alcohol. We perceive that the alcohol is is here in the molecule, and we use this this fragment term methyl. Um, if it had a one carbon chain, it'd be methyl. If it was a three carbon chain, it'd be propyl. Um, and then we look at the other half of the molecule that comes from the carboxylic acid, the bit with the carbon in. It's a three carbon chain, would be propanoic acid, but it's an ester, so we say it's ethyl propanoic. And if you change the left or the right hand side, you just change these stems and you keep the O8 on the end. Uh, so as a, a one more complicated example, if we have uh, substituted molecules, um, so if we have um, uh, something like, a, let's go back to our butanoic acid a second, um, the numbering of these chains and the numbering of substituents is based on, as you might expect by now, uh, we put the functional group that dominates here, so the oic acid in the one position, and we number the chain accordingly. Um, so if we happened, you know, here to have a, you know, methyl group in the in the three position or something, um, then you'd call this obviously one, two, three, four carbon chain. So it's butanoic acid again, um, and to denote where the substituent is, you just put this up front. So three. Methyl butanoic acid. So that's a, a little summary of some of the carbonyl containing functional groups that we'll come across. Um, Aldehydes and ketones, first of all, and then the derivatives of those, carboxylic acids and things like esters. And then how to name uh, ketones and aldehydes and carboxylic acids and esters. We won't in this course ask you to name the amides and the acid chlorides and the anhydrides because they're a little bit more complicated. Uh, so we'll just limit it to these four functional groups. And that's everything.